everybody. Hi, it's Becky from PowerToolsWithThread.com. How you guys doing? It's been a minute since we've had a chat. Let me turn my camera here a little bit. Maybe I'll just move me. Hold on. There we go. That's a good shot. I'm going to move my subscribe banner that I made. I'm going to take this down. This is a magnetic calendar. I'm going to take it down and I'll probably put my subscribe vertically like I used to have it over there. Still figuring out this room. So many of you have asked me what is going on with the motorhome. So for those of you who are new to my channel, welcome. Hi, I'm Becky and uh, I just hang out here in my sewing room and visit with you guys sometimes. We do sew alongs, embroider alongs mostly. I'm a quilter and machine embroiderer and I'm very glad that you joined us, joined me. <laughs> I say us because my husband pops in every once in a while, and, and he's a pretty integral, integral, in, integral, in, in, he's a pretty big part of the channel. <laughs> oh my goodness. We were at the Houston Quilt Festival, and we were supposed to come home October 31st, Halloween. It was a Sunday. And we were just pulling out of the RV park. We have a, a motorhome. We've got a 42-foot Winnebago tour coach. And we were just pulling out of the RV park, and I heard a hissing sound, and then it sounded like we were dragging something. And I explained in another video what a big fiasco it was, but it turned out that the serpentine belt had broken. So we were able to limp back to the RV park. We didn't even get a mile away. We had a police escort from Houston PD. They were awesome. A uh, very, very nice young man. I'm, it's still on my list to make him a, a thin blue line quilt. So if you guys have some suggestions on fabrics for that, I'm all open to it. i have kind of keeping my eye out for those kind of things. I'm looking for uh, dark grays. I'd, I'd like to find like patriotic grays and blacks and that kind of thing if I could. So anyway, uh, we got back to the RV park. That was a Sunday. Monday morning, Keith did some calling around. Seems, you know, you can find mobile RV repair, but not anyone to work on engines. So if you have a motor home, that's another issue. So Keith found somebody in Katy, Texas, which was like an hour away from where our RV park was. And this guy said he'd be out either Monday afternoon or Tuesday morning. Well, Monday afternoon didn't work and Tuesday morning turned into Tuesday afternoon and he shows up and discovers the belt is broken. We were kind of stuck because, you know, we really couldn't find anybody to come take care of us and to tow, just to tow the coach to a place that could fix it was going to be $1,400 just for the tow. So, and there's a whole rant about uh, our company, Roadside Assistance Company, on a, another video. So if you run across that, that's what that was about. But, so Tuesday he had to go get the belt and didn't come back Tuesday and then Wednesday it rained and so no work got done on Wednesday. Thursday he came back, tried to put the belt on and you know, he wasn't rolling in early in the morning. He didn't get in there till 1.30, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Friday he wanted to leave to go down to Galveston. There was a big bike rally down there on uh, that weekend. So he stayed really, really late Thursday night and couldn't get the belt on. He said he'd be there really early Friday morning. He was going to tow his bike behind him, trailer it down there, which because we're kind of on the way from Katy to Galveston. And he went ahead and came back Friday morning on his own and didn't have the bike with him or anything. And what he did, though, on his way was he stopped at a motorhome dealership and took a picture of how that belt was supposed to be put on. Well, Keith already had it on. We just couldn't get the tensioner loose enough to be able to get the belt on because Keith was underneath fiddling with it and I was hanging upside down through the bathroom master bath cabinet and my arm length wasn't long enough to push the tensioner far enough to get it loose to, for the belt to slip on. 
So this guy's got a big, long reach. So he shows up, they got the belt on. He says, fire it up, you know? So this is Friday morning, fire it up. So Keith turns on the motorhome and he starts yelling, shut it down, shut it down. The compressor was throwing sparks everywhere. So the compressor froze up, which is why the belt broke in the first place. Then we ordered the compressor. We are very blessed. We've got friends in the RV business and uh, one is a maintenance guy and his wife works in parts. So we called them and uh, got the part ordered and it came in. So then we came home Friday. Was that Friday? We figured out it wasn't gonna work. After that, we just packed up and came home. We didn't even stay on Saturday and Sunday. So we got home that Friday after Halloween. And by then we were 70 bucks a night in this RV resort and we were already up to $700 in, uh, in RV parking charges, <laughs> but the, the park was great. They let us uh, convert to a one month uh, rental, which was 730 and didn't charge us for electricity. So that was really nice. So got home, got the part, part came in on Tuesday. We came home in our little car. We have a little tow behind car. So we came home in that. And I've already told you guys this. So then the, the park came in and then we went back to the RV park on Thursday in Houston. We went back to Houston that, that Thursday. He said he could be there Thursday afternoon to fix it. So he did, he got there Thursday afternoon. He was there very late. And uh, we are in, in a fight right now with the extended warranty company, you know those people, they don't wanna ever pay, ever. They make your life so difficult. When we got back to Houston, I went out, you know, I went inside and everything right when we got there and I opened up the refrigerator to put some food in and the light was off and everything in the refrigerator was room temperature. And I said, oh no. But you know, we got there like right in time because another day and it would have started to turn and been bad. And I've been in houses like that. We had that happen at the coast one time and ooh, what a mess. So uh, the inverter failed. That's another chunk of cash. Oh, and the inverter's not part of our extended warranty plan. We don't have that coverage. We have other coverage, of course. I think that inverter is almost two grand. Did we get a money pit? <laughs> Man, ah! We came home on Friday. Once the compressor was put in Thursday night, we spent the night there because it was late. And then we went ahead and came home Friday. So the motorhome is here at my house. It's fine, it's fine. And we're, we needed to get it back because my quilty buddy Lisa and her husband Mike, they are in the process or they just moved to uh, South Carolina. Thought it was North Carolina, but it's South Carolina. And they were back in town to stop over at their storage place and fill up the Penske truck and then take it back. And they stopped here for a couple of days. So they were staying in the motorhome. They were here on Tuesday and Wednesday of this week and they just left uh, Wednesday morning, is that right? No, they left Thursday morning, yesterday morning they left. So hopefully they'll be back in South Carolina on Saturday, today's Friday afternoon. So they're still on the road. They're supposed to spend the night tonight in Auburn. We'll see. But we enjoyed their visit very much. It was a lot of fun. And I just recently got everything put away from the show because a lot of the stuff that I got at the quilt festival was still in the motorhome because we only had this little Chevy Spark to, to bring every, me and Keith and the dogs and get us home. We barely had any room in there at all. This thing's about this big. <laughs> and Keith and I are not little people. Everything's fine with the motorhome. Thank you all for your concerns and your prayers and your you know, worrying about me. I really appreciate it, but we are good. So then let's see, uh, last Sunday was my birthday. Thank you all very much for all of your birthday wishes. I got cards and you know, the Facebook group, the Power Tools with Thread Facebook group. It had birthday posts all over it and you guys are awesome. I really appreciate that. So that was fun. Uh, we went and spent the day with our friends, Frank and Dana. And uh, she's not a quilter in any way, shape, or form. We went to lunch in a little town not too far from here called Seguin. We went to 1838, for those of you who know what that restaurant is. It was excellent. 
and then you know spent the time over at the over at their house and just visited and we really enjoyed it we we had a really great afternoon so you can't do better than good friends and good food on your birthday right okay so i am in the middle of making the designs by juju nativity table runner and i've put out two videos on that so far for those of you that are making it with me, from here on out, I'm not gonna do any more videos showing how to make individual blocks. I did a video for the angel. This is how you will do your applique blocks, just, just like this. And I did a video for making all of the, the border blocks. Okay, so all the applique blocks are going to be done exactly like the angel block I did. Today I worked on the two Joy to the World blocks. This fabric comes from a fabric kit for this from Reb's Fab Stash. And I'll put a link below to that. And then I finished the Mary block. So I've got this one done. And the next video I do on this will be about sewing all the blocks together and adding the backing and doing a self binding. So that'll wrap up the little sew along that I'm kind of doing on that. Am I so happy, y'all? <laughs> I shouldn't do blocks like that where you have to really concentrate when I got a lot going on in my life because the first thing I did was I made the sewing machine block that goes with the so happy and I made it too small. I made the six and a half instead of the 12 and a half. So then I thought, well, okay, I'll go ahead and make the 12 and a half. Well, then I chose the wrong fabric. I made the 12 and a half, but I made it out of a light pink and you can't see it. <laughs> I mean, I did it, I'm practicing. <laughs> so I'm gonna turn this into a little mug rug, so that'll be cute. And then this, I don't, I don't know what I'm gonna do with that. Ugh, I'll probably take it apart and keep the scraps, right? I'm going to make it again in a better fabric uh, so that you can see it. So this is still in the works. This is still in the works. Now, this one is Christmas in the City. This is an Irish chain quilt. And this is this pattern, a lot of you asked me about this. So this pattern is in the Hustle and Bustle Jolly Bar from Fat Quarter Shop. I'll put a link to it below and everything so that you can get it. But, um, and don't you know, Lisa walked in okay she's she's a great quilter she walked in and she was looking around the sewing room and everything she took one look at this and she goes uh-oh i said what you got a block wrong i said no oh my goodness <laughs> and i think a couple of you had mentioned it to me in your comments but i thought you meant the entire block and it wasn't it was just this uh, four patch right here was wrong. Lisa pointed it out right away and I still go, I went, no, no, it's fine because I've been staring at it for three weeks now. This has been up here for three weeks, right? So now the top row, the middle row have their sa uh, sashing on them. And so now I've, I'm working on putting sashing on these and then I will do the rest of the sashing with the cornerstones and That'll be done and ready to go on the long arm. I've got some, I've got a, quite a few little flimsies I need to get uh, on the long arm and get them quilted. I find that I do that most like December, January timeframe when it's really cold and nasty outside, nowhere to go, nothing to do. So that's when I'm gonna get the long arm moving again. It's got a lot of projects on it right now from our big trip up to Idaho last summer there's still a few things on there that I would like to tackle. And then, um, you know, one of the ladies that I know in my DAR group, she gave me this big bag of quilt blocks. And she says, oh, these, I made these with my sister before she passed away. Can you turn them into a quilt? You know, this lady's like 80, right? And I'm looking at her and I'm thinking, I don't want to do that. <laughs> And, and I said, um, well, and she goes, oh, it can't be that hard. I know you can do this, please. And I was like, oh man, dang it. <laughs> so they're sitting right over there. Uh, Lisa and I talked about it. They're plain white quilt blocks. They're so big. There's 16 of them. 
and they are double-sided, plain white, with like a hand-stitched floral pattern in all of them, and they are, they have like an inch on all four sides of uh, poly batting. And one of them's kind of stained, so I think I'm going to just put them together with some uh, blue strip sashing and uh, then add a backing to it. And the, the one that's stained, I'll make sure that that's on the inside. And so it'll look like a 16 patch with blue sashing. That's what I'm gonna do. Easy peasy. I, I can't think of what else to do with them. I'm not gonna sew them together. They're, they're, not, they're not good for that. So I went to the quilt store. I found some fall fabric, just this thing of pumpkins. Really nice, I really like it. I'll use it. Maybe next year. I got enough for like a backing or something like that. Now I got that at Scrappy Quilter. That's where I went. And to go along with that, or I could even turn this into four placemats. I think that's what I plan to do with it now that I think about it. And then this goes with it. It's a, it's a very light tan check. Reads like a solid. So this goes with it. So I was thinking I could probably make some placemats easy peasy. While I was there, I got a panel. This is a pattern from Wilmington Prince. It's called Nose to Nose. It's really super cute. It's a little snowman out in a field and he's got a raccoon and a deer and a bear and some rabbits and a squirrel and some cardinals. Really cute. This is just adorable. So I got this, I got the panel. Let's see, where's my panel? I know I got the panel. Oh here, no. oh, here it is. Okay, so I got the panel. I'm gonna put this together just as, you guys will see me working on it. You beginner quilters, get yourself a panel just like this. This is how you make a super cute, easy quilt, okay? You will find, I know like Benertex does it and Wilmington Prince does it. These are free patterns off their website. So they just, you know, give you an idea of what you can do to make their, uh, their quilt. So this will work great. And so here's the panel. There's my little snowman. It's adorbs. Look at that raccoon. I love him. I think that's awesome. And then it's got the light bulbs through the trees there. See that? So then I'm just going to sew on the sides Let's see, top and bottom of that, there is a border print. Okay, so both the, the holly with the light bulbs and the animals, that's the border print on the top and bottom of the quilt. So that's easy. You just have to sew straight lines on the top and the sides, or top and the bottom. See that? So there's your holly, and there's the animals, right? And then the sides, the borders, are the light bulbs, the little light bulbs, okay? And the inner border is this gray with the snowflakes, light gray with snowflakes. It's an adorable little quilt. And so what's really nice about it is, is they tell you all the fabrics that you need to put this together and they give you the measurements. Really simple. So I encourage you to do that. A lot of quilt shops, will have this type of setup where they'll buy a panel and all the coordinating fabrics for it. And they may not have it kitted. This one, I think they did have one kit. I think if you call Scrappy Quilter, I'll link to it below. She can kit these up. She said she'd be happy to. She had plenty of fabric for this. This is an adorable little quilt. You know, a little in your life would probably love it, but it's so fun. So I will, uh, I'll link to that below and they have the fabric and the panels and they will be happy to make them up and send them to you. So that's Scrappy Quilter in Shirts, Texas. So I had mentioned it was my birthday. Well, right, it was before my birthday, maybe the 12th, I think. I had Kim Jolly on my YouTube channel, on my TV, and you know, she's talking. One of those things where they talk, she talks for like an hour. I don't, she does that once a week or so, something like that. And she just uttered the phrase, all Elizabeth Hartman patterns are 30% off. And I was like, what? <laughs> Man, I stopped what I was doing. I was sitting over here sewing on this thing. 
stopped what I was doing, went straight to the computer and got as many as I could that I did not have already, that they had in stock. So I already had, I already had Spectacular Savannah. I did not see this one. This, this quilt pattern I picked up when I was in Creations Quilt Store up in Kerrville, Texas. So I'm just a Elizabeth Hartman fan, you guys. I can't find Mountain Man. That's the one with the Sasquatch on it and the all the pine trees. I made that a couple years ago for my son. So uh, I have that one as well. So I got Spectacular Savannah. This is uh, Dinosaurs. I got Dinosaurs. Love this. And she will always include a smaller rendition, like a smaller quilt or a pillow. And she'll have the different fabric amounts that you need on the back of this. And then I love this one. I love this one. This is Delightful Desert. Okay. This one comes as a small quilt, medium quilt, large quilt. All right. This, I mean, the large is 96 by 96. That's pretty big. But there's a ton of adorable creatures on here. And then I picked up Fancy Forest. So I got this one as well from the Fat Quarter Shop. And you can make large quilt, small quilt. The large on this is 67 by 91. I will probably make the small version of these. I don't have the attention span or the time to make the big one. I really like, let's see, so here's a baby quilt, like small quilt, on this um, delightful desert in a teal and a lime. Isn't that cute? So there's that. And then here it is a little bit bigger in a, like a, a tan colorway. Is that right? Oh, it's a brown, a brown colorway. Really like this very, very much. But that delightful desert, that's... Y'all, when I was in the military, I was stationed out in Albuquerque at Kirtland Air Force Base in New Mexico. Loved it. Loved every minute of that assignment. And just became a huge fan of the desert Southwest. So that desert stuff. So I'm pretty, pretty cool with desert and cows and... Oh, that kind of thing. Here's Awesome Ocean. I love the sea otters in this. I got this one. Okay. And then the littler ones, I got Little Llamas. I got the puppies. I got koalas. You can make pillows out of these. Oh, y'all, look at the puppy pillow. See his little checkered ears? Isn't that cool? That's nice. And I got Antonia Tiger. And two more armadillos. Look at that armadillo pillow. I'm definitely making it. Definitely making it. It's just precious. And then pandas and sweaters. I got this one. I don't know what it is about her patterns. I just love them. I want to say I've got the flamingo. Lisa, the flamingo is around here somewhere. Couldn't find it. But I think it's here. It's probably hanging out with Mountain Man. But I, I'm pretty sure I picked that pattern up somewhere. But like I said, every one that they, the only one they didn't have that I really wanted was the robots. So when the time's right, it'll pop up and I'll get it. Yeah, I'm thrilled. So I got my birthday haul. <laughs> I told my husband, I got patterns coming in. Yay. But let's see. I made myself a note so I can make sure. Let's see. I told you guys about the status of the motorhome. Oh, I will be in Durant, Oklahoma for Thanksgiving. So I'm going to be at Lulu and Hazel's Quilt Shop on November 26th, Black Friday. And they're going to open the doors at noon and they're going to have some Black Friday specials and stuff, so I will be there. I'd love to do a meet and greet with you guys, so if you've got nothing to do or you know your relatives are driving you crazy, come on over and hang out with me for a while and just say hi, I'd love to meet you. I think that'll be fun. Our next trip after that, we are going to Las Vegas, January 17th through the 22nd, and I have already coordinated with the guys at So Yeah Quilting to uh, maybe be able to pop in and say hi when they're on their live and uh, definitely take my camera around the shop and give you guys a tour just like I'm gonna do at Lulu and Hazel's. So that'll be fun. 
There's also a shop down in Henderson, Nevada that I really want to go to. I haven't been. I'm going to try to make it down there on that visit, but I'm looking forward to it. So I've been in contact with Brody from So Yeah Quilting, and it'll be fun to see you guys there. Uh, let's see. A lot of you asked me, last time I mentioned I was talking about the Quilt Diva pattern, that Amy Bradley Quilt Diva pattern. And a lot of you said, do it, do it, do it. And some of you said you'd done it and you absolutely loved it. So I'm working with Reb's Fab Stash to possibly get a kit together, a fabric kit together. Maybe, I'm not committing you guys. <laughs> That's a lot of work. But I'm thinking sometime early in the new year, that might be fun to tackle and do that. I don't have any, uh, maybe when I get back from Vegas. So end of January, first part of February, give us something to do. That'll be fun. I got in a new Snap Hoop Monster from Dime. Designs and Machine Embroidery. Had to have it. Yep, happy, happy. This is the big one for the Luminaire. So it's a 10 and a half by 16. Love this. I definitely wanted to be able to do embroidery with the clear blue tiles expansion pack. And I'm going to be able to do the larger designs in that hoop right there. So I'm pretty happy about that. When it comes to doing like end-to-end -end quilting or quilting in your embroidery machine to finish your projects, I definitely prefer a magnetic hoop than to uh, float or anything like that. Uh, it's, it can be a lot easier on the magnetic hoop. So, my new favorite tool. Those of you who've been watching the uh, Nativity Table Runner series, those two videos, I found a new tool. It is called the Trimmer by George. And oh my goodness, you guys. I want to tell you guys what a fantastic tool this is. The clear plastic, it has the measurements on it. Let me see. I'm going to put up something that... Can you see the measurements on it? Okay, so it's got your measuring lines all on the plastic. And then it has this lip right here. This lip is metal. I love it. All right, it's called the Trimmer by George 2.0. Some of you had told me about this in emails and the Facebook group and whatnot from other table runners I've done. This allows you to not have to trim away your batting in the hoop when you do in the hoop blocks like this, all right? And I demo this trimmer in those two videos. So you use the measuring part, you put, the, you put it upside down with the the lip up over here and you measure, you know, it has the half inch line. And so you trim half inch away from the outside stitching line. And that's right there. All right. So you set that on there and you measure and you trim the block and you still have all of the, you have the stabilizer, the no show mesh stabilizer and the batting is still inside. And then you take this on your mat, and you just put the fabric, not the batting and stuff, but just the fabric, and you fold it over like this. And you make sure that that fabric is tucked up underneath like that, and you trim. And you'll cut off the strip of just the batting and the stabilizer. And look how close it gets. You gotta watch me do that in that video, you guys. This is fantastic. No more trimming batting away from the stitch line in the hoop. And then you can get rid of it. Just look how perfect, look how perfect that is. Can you see that? I am so happy with this. I have used that on every single one of these blocks. That's what I've been doing. I will never make another one of these designs. This is the uh, joy to the world. I'll never make another one without using the Trimmer by George. I'll put a link to it below. It's from Hoop Sisters. They are a US company. I think they're up in Missouri, I think. And she said they make them here in the US. So if they run out, they can always make more. You guys, Christmas, treat yourself. I promise you will not be sorry that you got one of these. I forgot to tell you guys, I got into that 
layer cake of Corey Yoder's Cozy Up and made that this quilt top last week. I was so anxious to get into it. I think it's just so pretty. I'm gonna send it to my Aunt Pam for Christmas, my father's sister. So I used Grandma's Girl from Villa Rosa Designs. It's a great little pattern, real good use for a layer cake. And then I had a little bit of extra fabric up at the top that I used to uh, fill it in and even it all out. That's all part of the pattern. And I have this fabric right here is going to be the backing. And this buffalo check is going to be the binding. The green buffalo check will be the binding. So I love it. It went together really quick. It finishes at 54 by 72. And I think it just turned out gorgeous. So I'm very happy with it. It's very warm and cozy, just like the, uh, just like the pattern is called. Okay. I promised a giveaway in the title of the video. So who wants a set of clear blue tiles from Kimber Bell? You gotta have an embroidery machine in order to use these, okay? This, is a, this allows you to quilt in the hoop using your embroidery machine. So th they're great for baby quilts and wall hangings and table runners and placemats and that kind of thing. I don't know that I'd be all that ambitious with the ginormous quilt, but you certainly could. Maybe if you had a weightless quilter from Dime to help hold up the weight. But if you would like a set of the clear blue tiles, thank you, Lady M. She is the benefactor of my channel and she sent these to me to give away to you. She is so sweet, so please give her big virtual hugs and well wishes and just leave a comment below and let me know you'd like a set of the clear blue tiles. Today is Friday, uh, November 19th, and let's see. We're leaving for Durant on the 24th, so you need to let me know by 5 p.m. Central, November 23rd, that you want to win these, and then I will get them in the mail to you the day before Thanksgiving, provided that you answer. <laughs> also, I always will do a blog post on powertoolswiththread.com to let you guys know who won all of my giveaways. I do a blog post on there and I show all of the options that I did with the YouTube comment picker. So you need to leave a comment below this video, okay? Don't leave a comment on the Facebook group. Don't send me an email, all right? And don't leave a comment on my blog. You need to leave a comment under this video. You need to have an account on YouTube, be logged into it. While you're there, subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and then I will also uh, provide the, I will also make notification in the Facebook group of who won the, uh, the clear blue tiles. Okay, been sewing all day. It's been so great catching up with you guys. I really enjoy hanging out with you in your sewing rooms. It's an honor. Hope you uh, share my channel with your friends and tell everybody about me, okay? We'll talk to you soon. Go sew something. Bye.